Welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and yet again in this video, we are going to talk more about limits, but there's a few other little details that are gonna come up in this example. So let's start with the graph that we have before us here. And what I want you to do is just kind of look at some of the key features of this graph, particularly when X is around negative five, when X is around positive five, and when X is around 10. So check out when X is around negative five. If again, we're interested in both sides of the limit, we want the left side of the limit, we want the right side of the limit. So let's have our eyes go towards negative five, but on the left side. And imagine X getting closer and closer and closer to negative five, what would the limit of this function be? And again, you're thinking about what would those actual function values, those outputs be in this situation? Well, from the graph, we can see as X gets closer and closer to negative five on the left side, we see those function values actually exploding in the negative direction. So in this case, we see that the function value or the limit here in this case is going to negative infinity. Now, if I look at the right hand side of negative five and I see as the graph is getting closer and closer and closer to negative five, here we see the function values are exploding to positive infinity. And so in this situation, we would say the limit as X approaches negative five from the right hand side is actually infinity. All right, now we talk about the whole limit itself. What's the limit as X approaches negative five? not indicating left or right. In this case, I have one side of the limit. The left side uh, limit is actually equal to negative infinity. The right hand side is equal to positive infinity. In this situation, we would say that the limit as X approaches negative five does not exist. Why? Because we have a left hand limit and a right hand limit that are not the same values or even the same infinities. Now we jump to when X is positive five. So again, checking out what's happening on the left-hand side, the right-hand side of that positive five. Here in this situation, as X approaches positive five from the left-hand side, we see function values that look like they're tending towards zero. And in fact, specifically, as I get closer to five, I have a value that has a hole at point one. So I can see just from the trends of the graph, it's getting closer and closer overall, trending towards zero as X approaches positive five from the left. Now, if I look at X approaches from uh, the five from the right hand side, I see that the value is trending towards this decimal 3.44 value. And in fact, I have a closed circle right at five at that location on that graph at 3.44 for the output value. So there we would say the limit as X approaches five from the right hand side is in fact trending towards 3.44. Once again, however, I have a limit on the left hand side and a limit on the right hand side that are not the same. So as a result, we would say the limit as X approaches five does not exist. Lastly, when we're looking at 10, we see we have a graph that as I get closer and closer to 10 on the left-hand side and also the right-hand side this time, my function values are approaching positive infinity. So both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, those function values are in fact approaching infinity. Therefore, the limit does exist in this case because both the left and the right-hand sides are in fact going to the same location. Now in both the X equals 10 and the X equals negative five, because we have limits, one going to infinity and the other to negative infinity, I actually have vertical asymptotes that are there, which is why we've got that separation of those graphs happening. So an interesting little note about the vertical asymptotes there, both at positive 10 and at negative five. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to click on the subscribe button for more videos from our group. Thanks.